The birthplace of a Confederate general nicknamed Stonewall Jackson, once home to the person who led the first movement in West Virginia becoming a state, and a dynamic history rich in industry and culture. I'm Wayne Worth, and you're watching On the Road in West Virginia, R55 Counties, Harrison County. Now, before Harrison County was a center of culture and economic prosperity in our state, the West Fork Valley during the mid to late 1700s was not the safest place for a white settler to establish roots. Just ask John Simpson, a trapper who set up camp on the West Fork in what is present-day Clarksburg in 1764, with no other people around and in constant fear of being attacked by a native foe. Just like John, many settlers to the region were always in constant fear of Indian rage, which drove them to build a series of forts throughout western Virginia. One such fort, which is in today Harrison County, was Nutter's Fort, which was built along Elk Creek in 1772. Now, a year later, some cool dude named Daniel Davison and some of his family became the first permanent settlers in what we call Clarksburg today, and the rest was history. Shortly after Harrison County became a county in 1784, Clarksburg became the first and only county seat. Now, Clarksburg, like much of the county in the 1700s, was very slow going economically and mainly had industries that consisted of tanneries and grist mills. However, by the 1800s, things really started to take off. Clarksburg became the site of the first federal court west of the Alleghenies in 1819. The Northwest Turnpike, which is today US 50, came to town in 1838. And the big game changer was the B&O Railroad that was constructed here during the 1850s. One industry that flourished during the arrival of the Northwestern Turnpike and then the B&O was the production of beef cattle. And Lost Creek, West Virginia would be the center of this boom. Lost Creek, long after the arrival of the B&O, ended up being the railroad's largest cattle shipping point. Now, Clarksburg, after the arrival of the Northwestern Turnpike, would be a distribution center of herds for drovers to move east. Hey, who would have known that a 1,200-pound animal would have such an impact on the county's early economy? Now, Harrison County during the Civil War was bustling with activity due to the B&O Railroad, but the county also gave birth to one of the Civil War's most celebrated generals, Thomas Stonewall Jackson. Well, Harrison County didn't literally give birth to Stonewall Jackson, but yes, he was born here in Clarksburg in 1824. Tragically, his father died two years after his birth and his mother died when he was around seven, and Stonewall and his sister would then move to Jackson's Mill in Lewis County to live with their uncle Cummings. At the age of 18, Stonewall left Jackson's Mill and started his military career at West Point, New York in 1842. Well, the rest is history, as Stonewall Jackson, after Virginia seceded from the Union, became a very celebrated Confederate general who was accidentally shot by one of his own troops in an ambush and died shortly after of pneumonia due to complications of a left arm amputation. As for Harrison County, it was a stronghold for the Union, especially in Clarksburg where the town was an important military station and supply depot for General George McClellan's Northern Army. However, the county did see some action with the Jones and Bowdoin raid. Though the action was brief, Confederate General William Jones and his brigade descended on Shinston, and a small skirmish took place. Knowing that they were pretty much outnumbered in Clarksburg, after the skirmish in Shinston, they headed up Simpsons Creek and raided Bridgeport. While in town, they pretty much burned two railroad bridges and pillaged a community, and then made their way towards Philippi. And we can't forget about one of Clarksburg's most notable residents and one of the state's founding fathers, Big John Carlisle, and his influence on West Virginia becoming a state. Well, the short story is that John Carl was a delegate to the Virginia Secession Convention in Richmond. Of course, that was when we were still part of Virginia. And after Virginia voted to secede from the Union, he came back here to Clarksburg and started a movement for Western Virginia to become his own separate state. He first called for a Clarksburg Convention, which was mainly a meeting to see if anyone else in Western Virginia had the same fire that he had in his belly. Believe it or not, the first convention here in Clarksburg led to two more conventions in Wheeling, which led us to become the restored government of Virginia, and finally a constitutional convention which ultimately, with Abe Lincoln's signature of course, made us the 35th state to enter the Union. Now the late 1800s and early 1900s not only brought an economic boom with coal and natural gas, but also spawned strong, culturally diverse communities throughout much of Harrison County. By the dawn of the 20th century, Harrison County was the top five coal producing counties in West Virginia and experiencing a gas boom of epic proportions. With that sort of boom, the demand for labor was very high. People from Italy immigrated to Harrison County to work in the coal mines, as did African Americans who migrated from the southern states. 
Towns like Shinston, which by the way is home to the Levi Shin Log House, which is the oldest standing structure in Harrison County, rapidly developed in the early 1900s with the boom of coal, oil, and natural gas. Salem, which was first established as New Salem in 1790 and settled by the Seventh-day Baptist families from New Jersey, experienced a big oil and gas boom in the early 20th century. Even the community of Spelter got in on the action when the nation's largest horizontal retort zinc plant was built in 1910. As for Clarksburg, a sheet and tin plate was built, which was later moved to Weirton in 1909 and eventually became Weirton Steel, and the former National Carbon Company, Graftech as we know it today, opened its doors in 1904. Coal was king here in Clarksburg and in Harrison County, but with gas came glass. The glass industry here in Clarksburg was simply incredible. As factories started popping up around town, spur lines of the B&O Railroad started making their way to Clarksburg, making the city the glass distribution center of central West Virginia. Heck, with this sort of boom, the first telephone service in West Virginia began in Clarksburg, and a majestic hotel called the Waldo opened for business in 1909. In the midst of all this activity, the county's population even increased by 47,000 in 20 years. So what happened to this economic powerhouse in our state? Well, the Great Depression put a damper on things as many of these industries struggled. Also, the mechanization of coal mining paved the way for a steady decline in the industry throughout the years. As for the glass industry, the float glass process made it possible to produce greater quantities of high quality glass at the same cost as some of the slower outdated glass making processes. Along with outsourcing, as a result, much of the glass industry here in Harrison County started to evaporate. Though Harrison County has seen its fair share of economic decline in 20th century industries, the arrival of I-79 and Quarter D, which is today US-50 in the 1970s, has today helped the county redefine itself economically. Both the interstate and US-50 has provided a unique opportunity for economic development in the county, especially in the industries of aeronautics and healthcare, and the building of Charles Point and White Oaks. And we can't forget about the 986-acre FBI Center, which was completed in 1995. Now, Bridgeport has definitely reaped the benefits of having this economic growth right there in their backyard, and over the years has developed into a strong community with a very stable tax base. Higher education also has a viable place in Harrison County's economy with Salem International University and the Fairmont State University Gaston Caperton Center. On a sad note, Harrison County was also home to the deadliest tornado in our state's history, and sadly it happened here in Shinston. Now it's very hard to wrap your head around an F4 tornado in West Virginia, but on the evening of June 23, 1944, tragedy struck. The damage was very extensive to the town and neighboring communities, but the loss of 72 good people will always be etched in the minds of those who experienced this horrible disaster. Now we couldn't end the story of this dynamic piece of West Virginia history we call Harrison County without at least highlighting the festivals that celebrate some of the very best of its heritage. Probably one of the most popular festivals in West Virginia is the Italian Heritage Festival. Since 1979, the festival has brought thousands of people to downtown Clarksburg in celebration of the state's Italian-American culture and highlighting the contributions of the early immigrants. Now, typically a week after the Italian Heritage Festival is the West Virginia Black Heritage Festival. For many years, it was held on E.B. Saunders Way in Clarksburg, the same street where the former Kelly Miller High School was located, which was an all-black high school that operated from 1903 until desegregation in 1956. The festival was initially a celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation signed by President Abraham Lincoln. Today the festival is very popular with nationally known entertainment and yes, some of the most delicious soul food. It's truly a festival that celebrates and embodies the very spirit of the African American community here in Clarksburg. Oh, and we can't forget the annual Greek Food Festival at the St. Spyriding Greek Orthodox Church in Clarksburg. The festival celebrates Greek heritage through food, and my personal favorite, the baklava. From an early trapper who roamed the West Fork alone, to the industries that brought people near and far who called and also called this place home, I'm Wayne Worth, and until next time, always remember, what we value and hold important to our lives today came from events that happened yesterday, and it's when we begin to understand the events of yesterday that we fully embrace today, which makes tomorrow become less of a mystery.